Creating a support free car is a cool project that can help you learn a lot of skills that are useful when designing something in Fusion 360. Our learning intentions for this video is to understand how to design a support free model in Fusion 360. At the end of this video you'll be able to create a 3D model that can successfully print without supports, use the revolve, scaling, object move and copy tools, set dimensions with angles and cut one body away from another. The theory behind the support free car is rather simple. The axle system for the wheel on the left should work in theory if we print it with supports. This section up here underneath the wheel will require supports in order to print successfully. However, if you print with supports in such a vehicle, it won't spin the wheel because the supports will grind it shut and get caught inside the, uh, the vehicle and you won't be able to remove them successfully. If we use this more angled wheel assembly, we'll have far more success at printing without supports. So the one on the left will not work without supports, while the one on the left should work with supports. Part 1. Drawing the wheel assembly. To draw the wheel assembly, we need to sketch the outline of the wheel. We then use the special revolve tool available in Fusion 360. So here we are in Fusion 360 and I have a new file named car2 uh, and I'm going to start by creating my first sketch. I'm going to create my sketch on this base plane here. Now it's very important that you follow this very, very precisely. I'm going to start with the line tool. The line tool is available through here on this one or you can press L or I can click on my icon up here. So I've got my line tool. I'm going to start from the midpoint. It's important to start on this case from the midpoint. I'm going to go out so that it's about 10 mils out. You can see that 10 mils is not very far. So I'm going to zoom up and I'm going to basically zoom up relatively close. I'm going to go down so it's at 5 mils down. Just avoid that tick there because it will end your sketch. Then I'm going to go down at one angle here so that it locks in at that point there. I'm going to go down to here. I'm going to go out to this one. I'm not being too careful here at the moment. Go down 5 again. Go across up here, and then I'm going to go back up and complete the, the circuit so that I've got a closed shape. And that's roughly the shape it should be in. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit select, and I'm going to delete. I'm going to select each one of these constraints one by one and delete them all. So I'm selecting these constraints and deleting them. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because some of these constraints aren't exactly right. You can see these two, for example so that they're parallel uh, and I don't necessarily want things to be that way defined. I'm going to start by then using the horizontal and vertical tool just to make this one, this one, this one, this one, this one and this one all horizontal and vertical. Those are the types of constraints I want to see to begin with. The next thing I'm going to do is do some dimensioning. I'm going to dimension this one first and make sure it is 30, 30 millimeters. So I'm going to press enter on here. I'm going to dimension this one next and make sure it's 10 millimeters. I'm going to dimension the difference between this little dot here and the midpoint here and make sure that is 5 millimeters. Then I'm going to dimension this one as 5 millimeters, this one as 5 millimeters, and you can see I'm not using constraints here like I normally would because constraints are just a little bit tricky with this particular one. Then I'm going to do the dimension here of 10 millimeters. Now that I've got that set up, I'm going to dimension some angles. I'm going to dimension the angle between this line here and this line here at 150 degrees. So 150 minus, sorry, 180 minus 150 is 30 degrees. That creates that angle there to be 30 degrees. This one, again the same, this line here and this line here will give me 150 degrees as well, which gives me that nice shape. You can see there it's a little bit messy with that angle, so I could pull that out just so you can see the difference between those two angles. But that's basically the sketch that I need to be able to draw this particular wheel assembly. I'm now going to hit stop sketch, then I'm happy with that. 
and I'll go into my uh, home view so that you can see that that's nice and zoomed up. And I'm now going to use the Create tool and I'm going to use Revolve. Now Revolve is a two-phase process. First of all, I'm going to select my profile and my profile is any line or closed shape. I'm going to choose this as my closed shape. Now I'm going to click on Axis over here and I'm going to use this line down here as my axis. And there you can see my wheel assembly comes up uh, as a fully revolved shape. Once I've done that, I can press OK. The final thing I'm going to do is just go to front view here. I'm going to zoom out a bit now because these are a bit big. They seem very, very big. Uh, 10 mils is way, way too big actually. That's part of my problem. Um, no, 10 mils will be fine. 20 centimeters is good. Um, so I'm going to basically uh, then get this guy here. I'm going to press the M tool. The other way you can do this is to go modify and choose move and the M tool, the move tool. And I'm going to hover over this and you can see as you hover over, it's a bit funny over here. When it snaps to the middle, that's when I'm going to click on it. Now that I've clicked on that object to copy, I can see and create a copy down here. I'm now going to move this along about 40, let's just go 40 millimeters. That'll be the length of your car being 40 millimeters. I'm going to click on OK, and now you'll see that you've got two wheels uh, for your car drawn. Now that we've drawn the wheels, we can draw the body around the wheels. We'll start by setting the constraints and the dimension for the base of the vehicle. And once we've drawn that, it's up to us to design the rest of the vehicle how we want. It's now time to draw the body. Uh, so we're gonna draw the body by using a sketch. I'm gonna click on the Create Sketch tool. I'm gonna try and click on that plane there. You can see I'm trying to highlight it there. Now I can get it, but if you can't, then you can turn this body off and you'll be able to select it very easily. And now that you've got that in place, you can turn that body back on so that you can see it. It is important that you can see it. The first thing I'm gonna do is draw a line tool. And I'm gonna start from this point here and just draw a line that goes along from that wheel to that wheel at the base there. It's important to do that and just finish that line off. So it's just the one line. I'm now gonna click on the select tool I'm going to select that line and I'm going to click on the construction tool. Therefore, I've now got a line that's going to help me to be constructed. Final thing I'm going to do to that line is I'm going to fix it so that it can't move. So now it can't be dragged or moved anywhere. So that's fixed. Make sure it is fixed. Okay. So now that's fixed. I can't I can't move that line. So the next thing I'm going to do is draw the baseline for my vehicle uh, and I need that to be a certain distance off the ground. So I'm going to go back to line tool now and draw my baseline. So just draw a line from here along here to somewhere along the edge. Now this line here is important for me to draw uh, and get this right before I do anything. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to use the dimension tool and I'm going to dimension the distance between this line here and this line here and I'm going to make it at the most 2.5 millimeters. And that should close down to that section there. Now that I've got that line, you can free draw any line you want. So for example, you can use any tool you want here. You can use the arc tool. You might want to use the spline tool to draw a sort of funny shape. It's up to you. Or you can just use a line tool like me and draw your basic shape out of your car. So I'm going to sort of make it a bit more wacky than the last one. Go out there, bit of an angle there, bit more sporty, straight down there, gonna have a bit of a angle there and then put that back in like that. You can see it's a bit more sporty than the last one. So that's basically gonna be the shape of my car. I'm now gonna stop sketch. Uh, let's look at the home view from that and you can see that that's that one there. I now click on modify. I'm going to click on this object here. I'm going to drag it out to 30 millimeters exactly. It's important that it's 30 millimeters, but I'm going to change the operation to new body so that I've got those two bodies together and click on OK. 
I might now just go around, it's a little bit angular. I might now use the modify tool and put in a fillet and fillet that one. And then maybe leave that one and I might fillet a different one to a different size. So I can press the F tool, tool to fillet this one and this one and just put a fillet of like maybe two millimeters in just to maybe three, three millimeters on that one and press OK. I'm going to press the F tool again and fill up this one. Maybe five. Let's look at that from the side and see if I like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Press OK. And I'm going to fill up this one here. Just move in and have a look at this one here. Pretty fairly large fill it on that one. Press OK. Maybe I might fill up this one here. So press F to fill up that one. Select that line there and just bring that around like that. That looks pretty cool, press OK. So that's my, my car for this particular design here. Um, and you can do whatever you want. You could do the side of an elephant if you so choose. Um, it's just important to have a bit of space all the way around the wheel uh, so that the wheels can comfortably do that. But I've drawn my car like that. Press the home button, you can see that I'm looking at it from behind now. Uh, and that's ready to go. Subtracting away the wheel holes from the body is a bit tricky, but we can do it following these four steps. First of all, we create a copy of the wheel. We scale it up a little bit, but only in two dimensions, and that's important. We move it back into position, and we subtract it away from the car body. We then repeat this process for the other wheel. Subtracting the wheel holes is a little bit of a tricky affair, but we need to do this uh, quite well. The first thing we're going to do, and we'll do it to one wheel, and then you should be able to figure out how to do it to the next. But basically, I'm going to start by pressing the M key to move. I'm going to move over this object here until that is selected. You notice that if I move up there, I can select the wrong thing, that one there. I want that to be snapped to the middle of that particular wheel. So it's very tricky. Get that in there. Before I do anything, I'm going to create a copy and I'm going to drag it out. And I'm going to remember that I dragged it out 30 millimeters. I'm going to press OK. Now, it's important to do this, modify scale. And I'm going to modify scale. And there are different types of scale. There's uniform scale and non-uniform scale. I'm going to choose non-uniform scale, then I'm going to select my entity that I'm going to scale up. And now I'm going to scale in the X distance to 1.1 and we'll see what happens there. You can see it's gone a bit distorted in the Y X axis and 1.1 in the Y direction. You should see it move both times. If you don't, that's probably because you're working on a different axis. Um, press OK. And now I'm going to press the M tool and move it back. But this time I'm not going to copy it. I'm just going to move it back to where it was. And it should hover over there so it's nice and even. And you notice I had to move it back 31, not 30 millimeters away like I did before. I'm going to press on OK now. This is the next important point is I'm going to turn off the wheels that I had drawn before. So body one and body two were the wheels. Body three is the car, so we should probably label these so that we're good. Wheel one. Wheel two. And body and the, the last wheel I'm not going to label because I'm going to use it to subtract. So now I've got a modify and I'm going to use combine. And I'm going to select the target body, which is my car. I'm then going to select the tool body which is that set of wheels that I just expanded up. And the operation I'm going to choose is cut. And I'm going to click on OK there. And you can see now that if you look down in the front, you've got this big section there of a wheel that's been completely taken out and it's ready to sort of go. And now if I turn my wheel number two back on, you'll see that it fits in there very nicely. So now you need to do that again for the other wheel. Same operation, once again, just move it the other way, do the subtraction, and you should come back like this.
And there you have it. I'm going to just press this off here. So I paused and did all that work uh, while you weren't watching. But those wheels should print out nicely uh, in order for us to have them spinning. And the car will print nicely as well because there's no overhangs that are greater than an angle of 30 degrees at all. Obviously, it'll have to print on its side, but we'll actually set that up on the printer as we go. It's important to put your name on the base of the vehicle so that I can allocate it to you correctly. As part of this, you'll put your name and class as initials and class letters in the base of the vehicle using a text sketch. Once you've done that, you extrude it into the model one millimeter. You won't extrude it out of the model because that would require supports. Okay, it's time to put your name on the base of the car and it's important that we do this as quickly and properly as we can. So I'm gonna basically create a sketch by starting with text. I'm gonna click on the base now and on the base, I'm gonna click somewhere here and put my, note, my initials, T-I-C are my initials, T-I-C, put a few spaces and then put my class, in this case it's gonna be 7X. Obviously you won't be in 7X, but that's gonna be my class. I'm gonna go down to eight millimeters now to keep it as small as I can and just move it so it's as close to the middle by eye as I can. I'm gonna press on OK and hit Stop Sketch now. And you can see that I've got that on there. I'm now gonna modify this, just press the modify button. And I'm gonna click on the text and type in negative one for my uh, extrusion and press enter to accept that. So you can now see that I've got a very small um, indent there, should have my name on it in an indent. And that's all you need to do uh, in order to have this car. And all we need to do now is get it ready to print. Once your file is ready, you need to make an STL to be able to send it to the 3D printer. In order to do this, you'll be ensuring that all the objects are visible in the browser, and then you'll be choosing that particular file at the top of the browser and saving it all as an STL. Once you've saved the file in the correct location, you can then Dropbox it to me so that I can 3D print it. The car is now ready to print, uh, and basically the way we do this is we make sure that it's all turned on. So everything we want in place needs to be turned on. I'm now going to right click up here and go save as STL, and this is the only way you can do this. I wish there was a, a file button I could press, but this is the only way you can do this, to right click up there and then save as STL. You'll see now it comes up like this, if I press on preview mesh, you'll see that the whole thing goes fairly funny. I've got my setting to high, and I've got this unchecked. I don't want this checked, I want this unchecked. Once this is unchecked, I'm gonna press on OK, and it's gonna ask me where I want to save it. I'm gonna save mine on the desktop. If you're working on a school's computer, you should be looking for a folder down here in devices or something um, down here in shared or something somewhere on your your uh, user interface that says My Docs. Make sure you save it there. Save it as something like car. You could use your name, for example. And I'm gonna hit Save. Now that that's saved, you should be able to go to the LMS, find the appropriate Dropbox, and Dropbox that car uh, ready to be printed. Possible extension ideas are hollowing it out a bit, and you can see from my first image that I've hollowed out the wheels and I've put some window sections in. You can also add some traction to the wheels. If you go back to my first image, you'll see that there are little uh, etches in the wheels. Both of these will have supporting videos uh, on how to do this.